high school, I had decided that I wanted to try to get into a fashion, like fashion merchandising, some type of college or university program. Mm -hmm. um, I had originally wanted to be a fashion buyer. So I went to school in London for fashion merchandising. Um, I was offered a really great job with um, buying out of Toronto, but Alex and I had been together since we were 17, so it was kind of at a point where move move to Toronto and pursue that, or move to Winnipeg and you know we got engaged. So that was the decision. I worked. Um, it was a little bit harder to find my way because. I'd given up a great job and then in Winnipeg there wasn't as much opportunity obviously as in Toronto. So I worked um, with this great lady who did styling and buying for um, like personal shopping type stuff and one of the girls that worked with her actually designed jewelry. So I kind of got, I got interested in it and just kind of started doing it on my own, hand making things. Girls on the team would buy some of it. Um, it definitely started out as a hobby. But me kind of always trying to find my way, like I knew that I had to do something, I wanted to do something. <laughs> Almost every summer, I would have a mental breakdown. <laughs> at the, we have a cottage at the lake. I'd be like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with my life here? Because we kept, we moved Winnipeg, Vancouver. You know, it's hard to kind of get settled, when, especially when you see things for yourself, you want to build your own kind of career. Right. So um, in Vancouver, I actually started taking metal smithing courses. And that really kind of opened the door for me. Um, you know, you can see a bunch of designs and things in your head, but if you can't execute them, it can be really frustrating. So metalsmithing kind of took it to the next level where I could see things and I could actually produce them. Um, and then I guess the next, it's funny, my life is like divided into seasons. The next <laughs> season we moved to Florida and um, that's when I got like the website going and things were just kind of picking up. So. It was just like a slow progression. Um, people, more people started getting interested. I started getting some press recognition. So at that point, I thought, okay, well, maybe I can take this to the next level. You know, get a website, start to get things going, maybe find a PR firm, um, and that's kind of it's just progressed from there. Really, um, best friends for a couple years in high school, and then he went away to play hockey. And I was like, oh. Huh. Maybe I don't like this, him being away, and I don't, we actually started dating when he was living in North Bay, so... Were you a I hockey was, fan from the start? I mean, where are you from originally? Thunder Bay, Ontario. Okay, so I mean, you would have been exposed to hockey. You That's know what, to be honest, I guess, I, I guess there were kids in my elementary school who played, but my father's Italian, um, my mother's Scottish, my brother doesn't play hockey. We were kind of, I don't know, I, I guess I didn't really pay attention to it much and when he started playing I just kind of assumed it was like how I played basketball in high school like you didn't I didn't think much ahead of it and um, then when he told me he was getting drafted he's like I think I'm gonna get drafted to the NHL and I remember laughing being like oh, I don't think I don't think you're really gonna get drafted you know <laughs> what are you talking about and then it happened and I was like oh this is serious like he might actually play professionally, which yeah. hadn't honestly entered my mind until that actual draft, and then it kind of became a little more real that, well, this will be like a whole life thing, you know, right. deciding to be with, or, you know, marrying somebody who is a professional athlete, it's a totally different lifestyle than what you would have expected for yourself. I started yeah. in Winnipeg, right. we were there for, well, I was there for three years, and then Vancouver, right. amazing city. Florida, um, then one year was Phoenix, Boston, right? Ottawa, Dallas. I stayed in Dallas. He went to New York, right? And then Montreal. It's amazing. I mean, you have literally that is his career. I mean, I, I, I printed out you know his competitive history, and you literally have. I mean, city to city to city um, along the way. There was a San Antonio rampage, but I think you only played a couple games there. I was there. there for one day. A single day. Okay. One day. We set up our whole place. I was 36 weeks pregnant. We set up our whole apartment, rented um, furniture, whatever. He had driven up to come get me in Phoenix. We drove like 10, I don't know, 10, 15 hours. We were, you know, getting pots and pans, and it was midnight, and his agent called and said, 
you know what, you might want to stop unpacking. And he was like, what? And like 10 minutes later, the GM in Boston called saying like, you know, congratulations, you're a Boston Bruin. I dropped him off at the airport at 4 a.m. and he was gone. Right. And I was 36 weeks pregnant, three dogs. I guess I'm moving to Boston. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So San Antonio wasn't a big stop on. Was there, how much discussion was there about Montreal? When you're an unrestricted free agent, you can pretty much shop yourself and, and go wherever the, you think the best offer is going to be for you and your family. Was there a lot of discussion about Montreal? No. We, I mean, the goalie market this summer, and it seems like probably in the next few years, is going to be a really tough one. Um, mm. And we knew the doubt that season wasn't his best. Um, so going into things... We definitely had an open mind, just kind of waiting to see, you know, who came. And Montreal was literally there, I think, half an hour after free agency opened. Yeah. We jumped on it really fast because, yeah. I mean, it's a great city. It's got so much history to be back in Canada. I mean, the fan base is insane. So we were just, like, overjoyed. We were actually in Ottawa for a friend's wedding. And right. Yeah, it was great. He can't buy you jewelry, can he? Will he... Will did he give up on that a long time ago? He, he kind of gave up on a lot of uh, fashion-oriented stuff, buying me stuff like that a while ago. He's more into the, like, he'll buy me a new computer or a technical, you know, something to that effect. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, he steers clear of the jewelry. Probably just yeah. as well. If there's, is there anything in his drawers or closet that you could throw out tomorrow if you could think you could get away with it? Is there anything that he wears that you just kind of say, oh, don't wear that? No? No? Not any old ratty t-shirts or old sweatshirts that he's kept? He would throw it out before I would. Really? Yeah. How much has motherhood changed your career? Um, it's definitely made my career second. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I guess he comes first no matter what. Right. And I know I wouldn't be doing this if it hadn't been for Alex's job. So in the grand scheme of things, I guess... It's a big part of me, but I have to put my family first. So yeah, it definitely changes. It definitely changes things from when you know I could do whatever I wanted. I, c I would wake up and work until one in the morning when we didn't have Sam. But right. you know, it's a lot different now. How much hockey is played in the home? Sam's a hockey fan. Sam's a big hockey fan. I kind of, I kind of thought that I was gonna get away with maybe having a boy who didn't play hockey but ever since I guess so halfway through the season in Dallas it started and now it's just full-blown like Montreal Canadiens Montreal Canadiens all the time I so. remember you would I read somewhere that he was you couldn't get a Dallas Stars shirt off of him even when dad went to play up in New York I mean it was it was the Stars is he wearing a Habs jersey now yeah we we got we got him out of the Stars jersey he that, I think the Stars was their first team that he actually was old enough to understand right so he became really obsessed with them and it's actually funny now because when we would leave Dallas he would say bye Dallas Stars or he knows he was born in Boston, but he thinks he was born to the Boston Bruins. He doesn't realize that it's a city, it's a hockey team. So with Montreal now, I mean, I think this is just going to be the be-all, end-all because he's so into it, and he wears his Habs jersey constantly. For some reason, he needs to have a number on it. He wants number two. I'm not sure what that means. Number two. Doug Harvey. That number's yeah. retired. That's a very famous number he in this city. He keeps telling me, you need to get me number two on this jersey. Right. So, is he a fan of his dad? He's he's an Alex Ole fan, but he's a big Carey Price fan now. Okay. So there's no kind of discouraging that. I mean, a three year old's a three year old, right? Oh yeah. I mean, I the one thing that I do discourage is I do not want a goalie for a son. Yeah. No, I feel like I it's stressful enough as it is. I can't have a husband and a son being a goalie. I might lose my mind. But yeah, he's. I guess Carrie's been unbelievable this year and Sam's taking a liking. <laughs>